Okay, in this video I want to talk about the jump to label instruction and how we program it and how we use it. So you can see here that I have a really simple program, just switches, turning on, outputs. Very, very straightforward. So let's say that I want to modify a couple of things and I want to be able to jump over a section because my program requires it. My operation in my machine requires that if one switch is activated, I will jump over a section of the routine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to insert a line. Okay. And then I'm going to activate a switch here and you will see how this works. So I'm just going to put a latching switch here, switch one, and this is going to activate what we refer to as a program instruction. I have some other videos on this on RSLogix 5000, but this one, and they work the same if it's 500 or 5000, they're very similar. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my program control bin here, and I'm going to grab my jump instruction. Now this requires an address. So I'm going to come here and you actually address this with a Q colon zero. Okay. And you'll notice that it jumps to Q2 here. I'm just going to call this jump one. And I'm going to enter this here. And this Q2 relates over to your uh, status file. And it's just a memory location for you to know that it's happening. So let's say I want to jump over these two rungs here to four. So what I want to do is come over to my label instruction and drag that down. And this needs to be the first instruction on the line that you want it to jump to. So it will jump from here it will skip rung two and three and it will go to four so five and six will operate all right now this requires the same address here all right so you can just click and drag that down like i showed you and this q instruction is now ready to go okay so let's go ahead and download and see how this works so as you can see Light 3 is on because that is the instruction before the jump and because my switch 1 here is activated it is jumping over L4 and L5 and it is going over and activating L6 and L7. Okay, your output's 5 and 6. Okay, because those switches are activated. And you can see I can activate these and they run normally. Okay? But if I activate these, absolutely nothing happens because that routine is being jumped over. The inputs are still activating, but it's jumping over the outputs. Now, if I deactivate this, you can see now that jump is not activated and everything works. So I come over here, I activate this. Now, um, now my jump is activated these are still on but look I can't control them so what happens with the jump to label is that whatever the last state the output was on it will stay on because the scan is no longer reading those it is jumping over those and this jump can be two or three lines like demonstrated here or it can be hundreds of lines so I come over here I will deactivate the jump I can turn one off turn them all off as is, activate this. Now those switches are within that jump routine are no longer activated. All right, so next what I want to show you is how you can actually have multiple jumps. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to move my jump to label down to here. And I am going to add a new line right here. And I'm going to add a new switch. This will be switch two. And this will go to another jump routine. All right. I'm sorry. It, this will go to another jump command. And I will identify this also as Q20. Okay. So now whichever one of these is activated, it will jump to this label. So 
if this switch is activated, it will jump over 2, 3, 4, and 5. If this switch is not activated, but switch 2 is activated, it will scan everything. It will allow L4 to be controlled, but 4, 5 will be skipped over. So you can have two different jumps. Okay, I never recommend having more than one label command in here going to the same jump because things can get very, very confusing. And you also never want to jump backwards into a label. That can cause your watchdog timer to shut the system down. So let's go ahead. I'll download this and let's see how it runs. So right now, neither of the jumps are activated. Switch 1 and Switch 2 are not activating. So all of my inputs and outputs are controlled. If I activate switch 1, L3 still works, L4 is turned off, L5 is turned off, L6 is, well it's not turned off, it's just not being scanned, but L7 is okay because this is the line where the uh, label is, the label instruction is the first one there. Okay, so you can see I have no control over these three here in the middle. Now, I deactivate it, everything runs as if those jumps did not exist. If I activate my switch 2, switch th L3 works, L4 works, L5 and L6 do not work now. But L7 still does. So not 6, not 5, 4 does. 3 does. Now, you'll notice that switch 2 is activated, so my, that second jump instruction is. But if I activate, turn a couple of these off, if I activate switch 1, it doesn't matter now. Okay? So, you can see that this, because this uh, switch 2 controlling the jump is being jumped over. It's not being read. So the first one in the logical path for the um, is the one that it will follow. Okay, it will skip over switch two and never even read it. All right. So this is a quick introduction to how jump routines work. Uh, thanks for uh, watching. And if you've liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button for more. Thank you very much.